In this video, I'd like to cover the method of weighted least square root regression. And this is a method that's widely used to a situation in which we have a collection of data, but some measurements are considered more reliable than other measurements. And if that's the situation, we would want to do our regression based more heavily on the, those measurements that we consider to be more reliable. So let's talk about how to do this. But before we do that, let's do a, a, a short review on what we've covered. So we've covered generalized least squared regression. And we have a sample in which of pairs of measurements, x and y, where i represents one measurement, and that goes from 1 to n. So our sample size is n. And we assume that x is, is known perfectly. And therefore, we, we want to find a curve or a function that describes how y varies with x. And so our model function has the form of a sum of basis functions of x. And in general, we have m basis functions uh, multiplied with m coefficients. These are our a's. So let's, um, if we write, let's define our, our, our vector of coefficients. This time is m. Those are our model coefficients. And Wessel has, calls that vector x, just so you know what I'm talking about. And let's define our vector y as our vector of y values. aka b that's what vec that's the vector that wessel assigns to the to the uh, y values but we're going to use y and so our error is equal to the difference between the model values and our observed values which is also our matrix A, so our model values are matrix A times our model coefficients minus, and then our we have to subtract our observed values. And we want to, so this is our errors or misfits or residuals. And we, we want to minimize the sum of the square errors, which we call big E. And that's equal to our the transpose of our error vector times E. So we're minimizing our sum of square errors. And in this situation, when we just use these functions, all values of y have equal weight. They all have equal weight in our regression. So let's consider an example. Say we make um, so we're, we're studying oxygen isotopes measurements 
in an ice core. So an important oxygen isotope is the ratio of oxygen 18 to 16. So we have some ice cores from, say, Greenland or Antarctica. And we measure the variations in that ratio as a function of, of, of depth to, to evaluate, say, global trends in, in global temperature. So we seek to find the the trend in global temperature as reflected in changes in the oxygen-18 isotope anomaly. And so you might realize that some measurements may be influenced by factors, say local factors, not relevant to the global temperature. And other measurements may simply have larger uncertainties or errors. So in the diagram I've shown, I've shown you one, one uh, measurement that has a much larger error than the others. So we, the point is we want to, to base our regression on the more reliable estimates. And so we have to we have to redefine our error vector. And we'll do that. So let's redefine. E. So before again. E I was equal to our model value minus our observed value. And we could define a new vector, E prime i, where each component of our, our new vector is E prime i. And that's multiplied by a weighting factor times our residual. And this weighting factor can differ for each measurement. Okay, so often, if we're dealing with um, measurement errors, the weight, the weight of the ith point is inversely proportional to the measurement error. And so if we, we can write this in vector form as vector E prime is equal to the matrix W, the matrix of weights times our original misfit, where the matrix W is a diagonal matrix with the weights on the diagonals. And we have N points, so we have N weights. So our new sum of square misfits, 
which is capital E prime, becomes E prime, lowercase e prime transpose times E prime, and that is equal to E transpose W transpose times W E. And that again was our matrix A times our model coefficients minus Y transpose, that's our error, the transpose of our error vector times W transpose times W times our error vector again. And remember, to minimize this, we take our we take the derivative of e with respect to each of our model values. So this gives a vector of derivatives of our misfits with respect to each model parameter. And this gives And we set that whole thing equal to zero. And that gave us two times A transpose. And then we have our product of our W matrices, A times M minus two times A transpose W transpose W times y, and solving for m yields our new model coefficient vector is equal to a transpose, and it looks just like the original least square solution except for we have the product of the two w of the w matrices and that's our solution for our weighted least squares regression the last thing i'd like you to note is if um if our W vector or our W matrix had ones on all the diagonals, then we recover our original least square solution. And that solution, I'll just write it out so you'll see it one more time, was that above equation. But we don't need to write the product of W transpose W because that's equal to I. Right. Okay, so that concludes this video.